<laughs> it's been a long time since I was in the military. <clears throat> but I, I, you know, you'll you'll have a false flag sort of thing, and uh, like you said, uh, uh, they will they will perform attacks on troops and things like that. But I think perhaps because there's so much going on, I think we got to slide back into the economy. I, I think that the people have heard enough here about those sort of things. Uh, we know we've discussed them before. Okay, well, I, well, if we've got three of the big five banks, brokerage firms going under, we've got hundreds of billions a day being pumped in uh, with interest on the American people's backs, trillions total. We have all of this stuff unfolding. Uh, then let's talk about, I mean, you're saying two, three years till this really goes into depression. Are you saying a, a depression's 100% now? In all probability, it is 100%. Uh, it was guess and, and, uh, and projection, uh, you know, based upon what we saw fundamentally economically and financially as well. I mean, is this not worsening? I mean, the, the, I mean, from your, from your projection or your forecast, this was, this deepened quicker than most people thought. I mean, this is definitely a catastrophic, is it not? I mean, I know you're saying it'll take a while to unfold and extrapolate and unwind, but I mean, does this mean when it unwinds, it's going to be that much worse? Yes. And you know, it's just like the early 1930s, only it's far worse because we had a solvent government, we had uh, a positive trade balance. Uh, we had gold-backed currency. Uh, and so today, and, and nobody had credit cards, of course, and today we have all kinds of debt, which didn't exist at that time. And that's probably the major factor, uh, it, not only individual, but a corporate. Look at our government. I don't have to go into it. And so these companies that were using tremendous leverage, as you spoke of earlier, uh, they're getting caught with their pants down. And uh, they're pr proposing and arranging all of these mergers so that some of these companies can get together and survive. And, yes, we've just uh, lost Fannie and Freddie and, and Lehman and Bear Stearns before that. And now they're talking about uh, Washington Mutual and, and Wachovia and uh, even, goodness gracious, uh, Goldman Sachs. And, and and at the same time, they're, they're, they're calling all over the country demanding that these large pensions and institutions stop lending their stock to people who are shorting the market. Now, that is totally illegal. I mean, there's no way you could legalize that. And what they're saying is let's go. Hold on, Bob. Here we go. The market. Bob, here we go to the full audience. Alex Jones Show. Because there's a war on for your mind. Bob Chapman, over and over again the last few years, well, I've been interviewing you since 2000, but over and over again the last few years, you've talked about naked shorts and short selling and how these brokerage firms are taking the hundreds of billions a day being given to them by the Federal Reserve, the private Federal Reserve, our money on our name, and they're still leveraging and shorting and pulling scams and games. Explain that to people, uh, for those that don't understand, until finally yesterday, the Treasury saying, oh, well, we may change rules to restrict this. But that only means uh, on the low-level people, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's more selective enforcement. So, so A, break down how those, how those little financial scams work, how they are illegal. Uh, and they're saying, well, we're now going to rest, you know, enforce what is illegal, uh, uh, and then where do you see this going? Well, first of all, I don't think they're going to enforce it. I'll, I'll wait and see. Uh, I noticed Mr. McCain called for the resignation of Mr. Cox as head of the SEC. Uh, the SEC has been a handmaiden to Wall Street for years. Uh, they never go after any crooks on Wall Street. They only go after the people who they think might be crooks in the middle size and small brokerage houses and attack who people who write newsletters like me. And they cook up all these spurious schemes to make it look like they're doing something when the people at the major firms have been running rampant for years. Now, with that said, we have a situation where they've said no more naked short selling. And I'm not going to go in and describe how that's done. It's just it's illegal. Then we just saw here 
on CNBC today that the government is calling up the people who run the pension and profit-sharing funds and telling them not to lend their stock to people who want to borrow it in order to go short. No, that's illegal. You can't do that. The government can't do that. I mean, you may as well just shut down all the markets because they're saying we don't want the financial stocks to go down or anything else to go down because we want to live happily ever after. What they're not telling you is they've been rigging the market since 1988. They've been rigging them in a big way for the last 10 years, and they want to continue doing so so people won't know what's going on. And so the next step is the merger of the firms that have been out there, leveraged 100 to 1 or rating AAA paper, which is triple B, and scamming even other bankers. I mean, the Europeans are furious. They're sitting with 48% of the toxic garbage, and probably another 10% is in Asia, and the rest of it is in America. And now they're saying it's all got to be re-rated, but the, but the insurance firms that rated have been caught in all the fraud. The accounting firms have been caught in the fraud, like Arthur Anderson. We're having Enron-level uh, implosions every hour, forget every day. All of this is going on, and there's no talk of investigations, no talk of indictments. In fact, they're talking about basically just giving immunity to the top bankers to just do whatever they want. You're absolutely correct. And that's where they're scrambling. That's where it's out of control. And they're trying to bring about a controlled collapse so that they can control it when we get on the bottom, wherever that is. And so they're merging companies together. Good example today. They, mer they want to merge together Wachovia Bank, which has a modicum of problems. And, no, I would say on a scale of 10, their problems are probably a 5. Uh, they want to merge it with Morgan Stanley, whose problems are probably uh, probably a two or a three. And so the reason they're doing that is not because they're worried about Morgan Stanley. They're worried about Wachovia. And so that's why they want to bring the two of them together. And Wachovia can, along with Morgan Stanley, generate the capital flow that's necessary to keep them in business. And that's what they're up to. But I will say this, and I've said it before on the program, you're safer in the brokerage house than you are in the bank because the accounts in the brokerage house are insured for $500,000 and more. And at the bank, you're covered for a hundred grand, and that's it. And, that, and, and now a whole bunch of analysts, I mean, it's all over the news, so many sources, are saying a thousand banks are going to fail, up from just a hundred. Yeah, but we, are, we, we had a prominent individual say, by the time this is over, over 4,000 banks will fail, and they will. I mean, I've got a list right now that was sent to me this morning that I'm printing as an addendum to the international forecaster when it goes out on Saturday, and it's going to take up a lot of space. going to do it anyway. It's a whole list of banks that got problems where their ratings have been dropped, and I, I can't even remember who sent it to me, but thank you very much. And we get we get stuff like this all from all over the world. Yeah, internal all day, stuff every day. Uh, Bob, do me a favor. Will you send that to? Um, will you add Aaron at Infowars dot com because that's his email? But I also look at it every, uh, a couple times a day. Will, will you send me a copy of that? Now, hold on one second. Uh, Aaron A A R R. Yeah, it's two A's. A A R O N. A R O N. Yep. At Infowars. At Infowars dot com. Okay. And I already get the forecaster, but then I have to, in my email is so clogged, I have to look around for it. But 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 please give me that, uh, folks. You can subscribe and get a free copy uh, at uh, theinternationalforecaster.com, dot com, or uh, you can also go there and pay for one and get it twice a week, or you can call and get the uh, hard copy. Now 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 now, Bob, in just a few minutes, we've got left with you today. And as this develops, I may have to get you on every day if you can do it because there's so much happening for your little quick ten minute blurbs. Uh, I want to talk about gold and, 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 and kind of recap what we've seen it do the last two days, what this means, how they tried to suppress it, what this failure to suppress it means, if you think it'll go back down again before it goes back up, or if, or if this is the final suppression before it goes where it should be at 2800 3000 you know, just a dollar parity devaluation uh, from 1980 numbers. Uh, so, so, I mean, give me a few minutes on gold, and then a few minutes uh, just on any other key areas people need to know about. 
Well, 